Hello, everybody. Um, Dread Pirates back. Um, this is a video response to um, uh, one of Yellow Flash's videos. Uh, specifically, this is the Fake Wolverine Continues Her Fight Against the Patriarchy video. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, Yellow Flash, uh, yeah, you're, you're, of course, one of the guys who's doing uh, a lot of the comic book videos, uh, hating on SJW Marvel. Hey, good job. You know, overall, like, keep up the good work, bro. I got a little bit of a nitpick for this video, though. Um, you seem to kind of get bent out of shape about the idea that Doctor Doom had Thor's hammer in his uh, in his throne room, um, and you're talking about like how that was a huge editing mistake, and basically that like oh that should never happen. Like how could they fucking miss that? Well, uh, as a longtime comic book fan, it doesn't really seem like you really know what you're talking about in terms of the the hammer exactly. Yes, he who is worthy. A person who is worthy can lift Thor's hammer. But that doesn't mean it's impossible to actually get the hammer next to Dr. Doom's throne room. There's uh, been numerous examples. Es essentially what it boils down to is um, only, only a person who's worthy can pick up the hammer and, by the handle, spin it around and do whatever they want with it. Um, they also, if they read the words and lift it aloft like He-Man, they can gain the power of Thor. That's, that's how it's supposed to work. Um, if you're not worthy, you don't have to be an evil person, but you're just not worthy, no matter how many times you lift the thing up, it's not going to move. doesn't matter. It's going to be um, like essentially trying to lift a neutron star. It's not going to happen. Um, if you're evil, it shocks the fuck out of you. So if Thanos tries to pick up the damn thing, or you know, uh, your average supervillain or just an evil bastard, they're going to get fried. That's how that works. However, there are other ways to get the hammer to where you need to go. It's not necessarily means that... And what it boils down to is you cannot lift the hammer. Lifting the hammer is impossible. But moving the hammer from place to place is not impossible. There's other little things that have, we've seen this before. Like, for example, Magneto can actually use his powers to affect the hammer and stop the hammer from moving with his, uh, with his mutant abilities. Um... I want to point to a good example of a way to actually move the hammer um, without being worthy. Um, there is a um, there is a Hulk villain slash alternate version of Hulk called Maestro. Maestro is a version of Hulk from a dystopian future in which he's old. Um, Hulk is old. He's evil, and he's taken over the world. In addition to that. He's, uh, he's smart, uh, but, but just very sadic sadistic, and he's basically killed all of the other superheroes. And he's taken trophies of all of them. He's got Captain America's shield, he's got Iron Man's helmet, and he actually does have Thor's hammer as a trophy, which he carries around with him. Now, of course, he's evil, he's not worthy, and it'll shock him, and no matter how much he tries to pick the hammer up, it's just not going to get lifted up. But what he does is, he puts his huge-ass arm in the loop... Uh, around uh, the hammer, and then without actually touching the handle itself, and with his raw strength, he can actually lift it up. And not only carry it as a trophy, but use it as a weapon. There you go. That is an example of someone being able to move the hammer without actually lifting the hammer. Um, in addition, there's other things too. Like, for example, like simple things like vehicles can move it. So, like, say Thor is riding in a cab. I don't know why he'd ride in a cab, but say he was riding in a cab, and he sets it down on the seat. The way you're describing it is basically that should cause the entire taxi cab just to stop moving and possibly embed into the earth. Which, logically, if it was just the case that the hammer weighed like uh, as much as a neutron star, would be the case. But it's not. It's a mystical hammer, and it's responding to a conscious being attempting to manipulate it. Um, you can set the hammer down on a Quinjet, um, and inside of a car, inside of a train, anything like that, and just have it move, and the hammer will travel. It's just, if there's anybody on that train that tries to lift the damn thing, they will not be able to lift it up. That's how it works. So, it's not impossible for Doctor Doom to necessarily have gotten the hammer in there. In addition to that, Doctor Doom is one of the most powerful and potent mystics in all of the Marvel Universe. He's, um... He's, he's, he was a rival for Doctor Strange for the, uh, the uh, role of Sorcerer Supreme. Uh, it is, you know, between... He's also a brilliant scientist. It's not impossible to assume that Doctor Doom could find a way to stick that hammer in there. If you notice, he's not wielding it. 
Because if he could, he would. Doctor ha- Doctor Doom getting the power of a god, that's something he would definitely like and definitely use. Uh, he's, he's done things like this before, where he's stolen the power of the Silver Surfer, he's stolen the power of the Beyonder, things like that, um, the power of Galactus, he's, he's definitely done that. Those are all sources that do not require a morality cue in order to, uh, to wield the power, whereas Thor's hammer does. So that, that is just a trophy. It also felt like you were nitpicking a little much about, like, oh, well, why has he got all this stuff, like, sitting around his throne? Why wouldn't he have it in a case? Uh, look, I, I, what it boils down to, the reason why I'm bringing this up is it just kind of um, kind of annoyed me. Uh, or just, it just I don't know, because I'm a fucking encyclopedia of nerdy, useless shit. I just, like, I'm like, no, no, wait, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Um, I, I feel like you were kind of nitpicking that stuff specifically. Um, whereas, okay, if, if this were an older comic pre-SJW invasion, if this was something happening like during the Civil War and that showed up, I don't think you'd be making a video about this comic. I think you would have probably just ignored it and let it go. Um, I don't think that's really the... I, I, it feels like you're kind of reaching at straws there. Um, now, on the other hand, the rest of the video, excellent job. Excellent job. You're criticizing the SJW bullshit. You're criticizing the psychofeminism that we're having to deal with in Hollywood and in in Marvel right now. Other than that, dude, you're great. Uh, I really like your videos, and I think keep up the good work. Um, all I ask is that basically try to be as accurate as you possibly can. And it's like if, if your answer to this is, well, I'm not a giant fucking nerd, and I don't know all this stuff, every single thing again, and hey, cool. But I just wanted to, just FYI, it's not impossible for the hammer, the hammer to get there. Um... Now, am I implying somehow that your point that, um, I forget her name actually, but the crappy third wave feminist editor on there is right and you are wrong? Absolutely not. I ascribe that basically, um, the, the old adage that a broken clock is right twice a day. I don't think she noticed that. I don't think she paid attention one way or other. I don't think she's doing her job whatsoever. It just so happens she's, you know, it, it was something that was missed that doesn't really even matter. They don't... The, the current people at Marvel Comics right now don't actually care about writing comics. They don't care about accuracy. They don't care about um, using continuity and using it in a good way. Which is ironic because one of the biggest people that has kind of come under fire right now, unfortunately, rightfully so, is Mark Wade, which hurts me a lot because I really like Mark Wade. I'm, I'm, I live in Tampa. So we have uh, cross-gen comics here which Mark Wade was a big part of. Mark Wade um, was just a huge, you know, he, he's often regarded as a comic book encyclopedia. Uh, I like a lot of the work that he's done. I think, I want to say, like, right around the time he was doing Daredevil, he just kind of lost his way. And I think, like, a lot of things, like our, our, our glorious president, like many people and like a lot of these writers, I think everything starts falling apart once they get on Twitter. And um, I think that's part of the outrage that a lot of people are seeing and why people like you were doing videos. And again... Keep up the good work, man. I, I really like your videos. Keep keep up the good work. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, regardless of these people's politics, we could probably just enjoy their work if they just stay off the fucking Twitter. That would make things so much simpler. Why not just, just fucking write a story? Um, but they're out of control now. They are. They really are. It, it, it's getting to the point where it's just they're, they're focused more on pushing a political agenda than um, writing a good story. They've lost. They've lost the mission. By embracing this new one, this this whole political thing, by just being a crazy person with an attitude and a political opinion, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, I mean, what, what's what's most ironic is it's like you know, if if this were like a right wing comic, if this were like something like glorifying Donald Trump or something like that, or a couple years ago glorifying George W. Bush or any anyone anyone like that, um, the liberals, Democrats like myself would be hating on it, you know. But this is the same type of bullshit. It really is. It's the same type of bullshit in reverse, and it's, it's gone too far. Um, it's, it's a reason why um, I remember, like, you had... I'm not sure if they're still being made or not, but it, you remember, like, um, Barack the Barbarian? Uh, you know, and there was, there was some, there were books uh, back during a couple elections ago where you had Barack Obama as a, as, as a Conan the Barbarian, and you had another one which was, like, John McCain as some kind of fantasy hero. And um, I'm an old Channel Awesome fan, so, like, Linkara was, was kind of making fun of that stuff. It's like, these books are propaganda, nothing more. And he's kind of right. I mean, I feel like they're kind of awesome for what it is if, if you just kind of just like, you just kind of turn your brain off and maybe just turn your political leanings off. I mean, look, I'm a Democrat. I'm, you guaranteed I'll, I'll read the Barack Obama book, but I'll also read the McCain book too. I don't care. That just, that sounds like something stupid. And both of those books sound like something stupid and awesome that I would get, get, get could bring a smile to my face. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it's that that I think is um, it, it, it's interesting how like how far skewed it's gotten. Like Marvel was always left leaning. Um, the I remember the Civil War and and a lot of the complaints that went on the Civil War, whereas that like Captain America was blatantly right in the Civil War. And Captain America's uh, viewpoint at the time basically was during the Bush administration, which was not very popular. And a lot of the people, a lot of the guys at Marvel were always Democrats and didn't like George W. Bush. And so it was kind of, you know, uh, it was like Captain America was essentially, you know, was was basically pointed out as the right guy to follow in that conflict, regardless of the fact that Tony had a point. And um, a lot of the disappointment with the Civil War, although I still I still really enjoy Civil War, um, but a lot of the disappointment with that story is the fact that it didn't really feel enough like a genuine argument, like there was there's a there's a point on both sides. At the end of the day, Tony's side had the cape killers and and hired Norman Osborn and the Thunderbolts to be to, to hunt down superheroes. Um, he was locking people away in the negative zone. He had uh, that horrible clone of Thor that murdered um, Black Goliath. It was just, there was all sorts of crazy shit that basically said, yeah, Tony's wrong. Um, and then it tied together with the secret invasion, like maybe the scrolls had something to do with it too. It, you know, it, which I think the scrolls point was, no, we just took advantage of the fact that you were fighting with each other. It was like, you, you destroyed yourselves. Um, it, you know, it was, it, it should have been more of an argument, of a debate. And it wasn't. Um, and that was something that people were really disappointed by, understandably so. And, um, and at the time, it kind of went over my head a little bit. Because I'm a Democrat, so it's like, oh, yeah, I agree with Captain America, you know. So, But it's now it's the point where it's like, I'm lo- even me, a liberal, I'm looking at what's going on at Marvel Comics, and I'm like, you assholes, get the fuck out of my party. Get the fuck out of my party. Get the fuck out of my comic books. Keep that bullshit. I read comics to forget about the bullshit that goes on in the world, and the political nonsense. And e- as much as I don't like Donald Trump, Far left, far left, guys that are writing these crappy comics, you're the reason he got elected. Is this kind of bullshit that we're seeing in the media, bullshit we're seeing in movies, bullshit we're seeing in Star Wars and, like, The Last Jedi and in our comics, that is the reason that propped that guy up there? Because everybody, whether they're Republican or just moderate and reasonable and disgusted with your your behavior, that they just, they all vote Republican. It's the very same reason. You're part of the same, you're part of the same problem that put him in office. And running Hillary against them was a stupid fucking idea. It was just, you know, you put a charisma vacuum in there, and that's what it does. Anyway, I'm rambling now. But again, um, kind of a minor nitmick, I admit. Uh, but at the end of the day, dude, I still really like your videos. Keep up the good work. You know, keep voicing your disapproval of what's going on here. Um, Marvel isn't going to change until we make our voices heard that this is not profitable. We don't like this. Um, this is one of those moments where, again, I'm, I've been also... Um, Joined the joined the the rebellion against uh, uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Disney Star Wars. This is the type of thing where um, you know whether it's one of the seven deadly sins or not. Greed is your friend now. We gotta hope that greed will make these people realize, hey, you know, morals are great, but uh, you know we like making money more. This is the type of thing where it's you gotta hammer home that. Whatever, whatever their opinion on this, regardless of the fact that many of us dis- disagree, um, this shit isn't profitable. This isn't profitable. We don't want it. We don't want it in our entertainment medium. So, uh, to g- to guys like you and guys like diversity in comics, what whatnot, keep up the good fight, man. Keep up the good fight. Uh, check you later.